inspired at all by the freshman class of 2018 in Congress? A little. Remember like the squad and a little bit? <laughs> just, just, just a tiny bit. <laughs> just, just a tiny. Well, let me, <laughs> let me say, of course I was inspired by them, but then when I started entertaining the idea of running, now I'm going back and I'm looking at the, the documentary that they did and I'm like, yeah. okay, well, let me, I think, what was it called? Bringing Down the Heaven? in the house, I can't even think of the, the, the name off the top of my head, but um, you know, they did a documentary and they followed AOC and Cori Bush and two other young ladies. It's, it's on Netflix and it documented their 2000, their 2018 run. Yeah. From the beginning. And I, I went back and I watched that because I wanted to understand what inspired these women who mm -hmm. were, you know, unknowns um, yeah, your average everyday woman. novices that decided they were going to go run up against 30 year incumbents you know right. so I, right i had a you know like a kindred sort of spirit like let me draw from them and so after watching that documentary it helped to shape and to and to ground ground me it was sobering mm. you know watching what they went through. I mean, right. AOC ultimately was the only one who won that year, but of course, Cori Bush turned around and came back. Yes, right. she did. Yeah, it was uh, uh, AOC, Cori Bush, uh, Paula Jean Swearingen from um, mm -hmm. West Virginia, mm -hmm. and and one other um, young Amy lady. Villela of Nevada? Yeah, Jean Vile yeah, from Nevada. That's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was called Paula. Knock Down the House on uh, Netflix. It. I said bring down the house, but that's Queen Latifah and Steve Martin. Uh, <laughs> and I, I'm going to go ahead and say, I rewatched that movie like last year <laughs> in like 2019 with my little cousin because she was born like that year. And so like for her, it's like her comfort movie. I rewatched okay. this and I was like, I need to call Queen Latifah right now because I'm going to snatch her black card up. What is this? <laughs> that movie was so offensive. I was like, okay, so this is just a minstrel show. Like, y'all just put on a minstrel show. Yeah, okay, yeah. I know. It was this was 2003. Yeah. It's like, amazing how much our perspectives have changed. We watched Jesus. Aladdin. I, I grew up without Disney, and so she's been introducing me to Disney movies, and we're both sitting here like... Not three minutes into the movie, he looks at me and he goes, is this cultural appropriation? I was like, no, baby, this is just racist. <laughs> like, this is just racist. You know, stuff that we grew up with that we never, it never crossed our minds that this isn't really appropriate the way mm -hmm. that these, that they're depicting, you know, people from around the world in different cultures. And we just, we didn't even have that awareness yet. I mean, sure, people did have that awareness, but it wasn't right. widespread enough in culture. Whereas I mean, maybe I've just evolved as a person. That's entirely possible. But I think that society has also evolved. Oh, absolutely. In that time. I mean, if you look I mean, back. A combination of the two. Yeah. But yeah. Let me, going back to knocking down the house. Of course. You know, I, I was inspired, like I said, because all of the ladies were taking on somebody that yep. was, you know, um, an incumbent. An, an yeah. incumbent. Now, I also say I, I felt a sort of um, kinship, especially with Cori Bush, in mm -hmm. a sense, you know, not just that she was a black woman, but she also is a minister in her background yep. and nurse. And she literally went from, you know, activism on the street of Ferguson mm -hmm. to I'm yep. going to run for office. And yep. she faced and she was running against uh, Lacey Clay mm -hmm. Jr., who the Clays were like political black royalty in, yep. in St. Louis, Missouri. Like okay. his dad had held the seat for 20 years and then the son held the seat. So they were wow. like a dynasty. Yeah. And, and they were like really coming after her. Like you, you had the audacity to run after the clays, you know, right. seat or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, and even someone said to me uh, a couple of weeks ago when they were asking about my race and they were like, now what are you running for again? And I said, you know, I'm running for DC delegate. They was like, um, you're running for Eleanor Holmes Norton seat. I said, I'm running for the people's seat. That, that, right. <laughs> this doesn't belong to any particular person. You understand? Yeah. I don't care how long. That's the people. See, the people mm -hmm. decide who's in that. She's like, oh, yeah, I hear you. I hear. You. But yeah. no, I, I I need to I need to correct that because yeah. sometimes we think that. And and yeah. so like in Missouri, they you know, how dare you? That's that's the clay seat. They, they've right. been the only ones that held. It doesn't belong to them. Right. And, and so they actually, you know, ran uh, quite a negative campaign against Corey because I wondered how this black man was going to position himself against this young black woman. Oh, right, wow. especially a black woman who had such a specific face and name in the Ferguson protests. Listen, 
I saw a flyer produced by his campaign that sent out on her talking about how could, you know, a nurse file bankruptcy and, and Ooh, can you no, that is I was like, Oh, are you doing that for real? Oh, that's what we do it today. Yeah. Okay. And Carter going to come for you, sir. Listen, you know, all that did was, you know, inspire the women mm. who've been through bankruptcy and stuff all to get out the boat for her. Like, oh, right. you're talking right. about us. <laughs> yep. Last time I checked, God don't like ugly. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so I really, you know, resonated with, with, with her story. And, and, you know, even though she lost, I was very moved by her coming back, you know, n- mm-hmm. not letting that keep her down and coming back in 2020 and ultimately yep. winning. So, yes, that is the inspiration that I have received from these these young women that have have really sort of propelled me into continuing to move forward, even when people are saying, are you sure? Mm-hmm. You know? Mm. So right. what you're saying is you're really excited to join the squad? <laughs> Listen, ready. <laughs> hey. Ready. <laughs> That's what I heard. I'm hearing you just ready to join your friends. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's, let's get up and make this thing happen because, you know, I'm uh, we're all about the people. It's, it's time out for 20, you know, 2020 politics. We're in the 21st mm-hmm. century now. I mean, you know, I mean, for the old way of doing things. The, the status quo just isn't working. And so... There's a there's a thing about timing too, mm-hmm. and I think that the, the timing is right right now yeah. for change. Yes. Where people yes. are saying we yeah. got to do things differently, the way we've yeah. been doing things, and 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 folks who have been in these offices and in these seats for years, God bless them, but let them move on so that Amen. the torch can be passed and new energy can start to flow. Yes. Amen. And at the end of the day, even just having competitive uh, elections rather than a single person running unopposed for years, it reinvigorates the conversation in the community and it gets people yeah. inspired to get involved in thinking about these issues rather than just saying Joe Crowley's going to run again and nobody's running against him. And so, eh, you know, he's going to do what Crowley does and I don't even really know what he does, but hey, he's my representative. So why do I need to vote? You know what I mean? And then AOC comes along. She's like, "Uh, actually, we have a chance to do something about these issues. So come and talk, you know, come and come and get involved in, in, you know, thinking about these things and and, and galvanizing people. And every time somebody stands up like Cori Bush and and all these other people and, and, and runs against the incumbents and people like yourself, it's it's not saying that, hey, necessarily we hate you as an incumbent it's just that like having conversation around these issues is healthy and important and may the best person win and may and the more we have you know fresh blood coming in with new ideas more we we inspire more people to get involved in politics because they say hey somebody's talking about these ideas that weren't previously being talked about and those speak to me and now i'm going to get involved in my politics so it's so healthy for our democracy to have that so yeah we're so thankful for people like you who are bringing bringing this joy to the table you bring such joy to these issues it's it's wonderful Listen, I'm a hope dealer. Have you not seen my merch? I love <laughs> it. We <laughs> have. <laughs> uh, that's, my, that's my little sticker. But that, yes. That, yes. You know, I, I'm, that's what my Wait, merch hold that says. Up. I'm, hold it up I'm a hope higher. It's a little thing. It says hope dealer are. on yes. it. Yes. I don't yes. know if you can see it. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. I love that. <laughs> because what I also feel like is that the city, in, in you know, because of that dissolution, they've lost hope. You know, that you yes. know. Coupled with the pandemic and everything else that's sure. happening, you know, folks are looking to be inspired again. Folks are looking to want to hope and believe that something can change, that there could be a possibility that things could be different. And that's what you want. Like you were saying earlier, democracy thrives when as many people are involved as possible. Yes, as exactly. People- Staying home and 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 becoming disillusioned and disengaged and stuff is what allows for democracy to stagnate right. and, yeah. and to not not grow. And so, if I were an incumbent, I would welcome more voices into the conversation. You know, right. and, and say, hey, like you said, it made the best person win or what have you. But the more people are in there, the more then we have to have these conversations. That you're challenged to have to have these conversations and earn your vote, not just exactly. assume you're going to get it because you've always got it. Andrew Yang inspired me so much because that's how he always talked about his run for presidency. He's like, at the end of the day, it's not about me winning or not. It's about having these conversations. It's about bringing these ideas to the national conversation and making sure that whoever does eventually win 
has yes. heard these arguments mm -hmm. and yeah, is exactly. ready for right. them and can bring them to whatever seat they're running for because they're aware that a, a large part of their constituency voted for somebody who was advocating for these issues. You know what I yeah. mean? So, and, and that's, that's, if we can get more people thinking like that, we can, we can get more people inspired to run. And, and I think we can really reinvigorate um, involvement in politics, especially local politics. Thanks for checking out this clip from our show. To watch more clips or full episodes, click on our profile below. If you want to stay up to date on all of our new episodes and videos, click subscribe. And if you have any ideas for future guests or topics that you would like to see us cover on the show, leave us a message in the comments or connect with us on any of our social media channels at Funtime Program or on our website at FuntimeProgram.com. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.